Welcome, healthy friends, to the reality of health. Today, we're talking about vitamin C, and I think you might find this one a little bit interesting compared to what you've normally always heard about vitamin C. I'm going to give you my take on what I think it actually does. It's different than what you've heard. Not in the sense of like, it doesn't work or you don't need it or anything like that. I'm just going to give you a different perspective on what it does in the body. We're so concerned with our immune system. Do we even have one? Eric, of course we have one. What a stupid question. You hear about it constantly from everybody. Well, what if it's just called the immune system, but it's not actually an immune system? Well, I'm getting in the weeds. Let's just get into it. So obviously vitamin C is pretty good for you. We all know that and you need it. You need good sources. I'm not a big fan of pill form. I'm not a big fan of, well, most of the stuff that you can buy in a grocery store or a pharmacy and that kind of thing, even the health food stores. Food form is better. And I'm going to tell you that the food form that you think you're getting, you're not getting as much as you think. So even though we read how much is supposed to be in a food, it doesn't mean that there's that much available. And I understand that vegetarians and vegans might not like this, or even those of you who believe in whole foods, but there are plant anti-nutrients and they do block the absorption of certain things, especially minerals. But they tell us that, oh, you know, kiwi, which is supposedly for fruits and vegetables, the highest source of vitamin C. That might be true, but do you actually get all of it? I'm just questioning the narrative. I know that they've done studies to show that, yes, of course, you increase the vitamin C content in your body by eating kiwi or some other things like broccoli and bananas and citrus we've always heard of. But are you actually getting all of that that they claim is in that food? Because I'm thinking, no. Um, you know, I've been studying this topic for more than 35 years. That would be the health topic of especially nutrition. I'm not seeing a lot of evidence that what we're told is always exactly what we get. There's such a thing called synergy. Every single, we'll call it nutrient, has other things that it needs to either be absorbed or utilized. So for example, when you consume vitamin C from an orange or citrus, that pith that you get, that, you know, all that connective tissue that they use to hold all those little pockets of goodness together, those are bioflavonoids. And those proteinous type fibrous structures help to, they help you absorb the vitamin C and then help utilize it. So if you get a source of vitamin C that doesn't have a lot of bioflavonoids, then you don't really get as much vitamin C intake as you think. The bioavailability of a lot of the nutrients that you read about and hear about they require more than just you eat it, chew it, digest it, and it all of a sudden magically appears in your blood. It doesn't work that way. There's other things involved. Okay, well, I think you get my point. It's good. You need it. But there's ways that we can skirt around that and make it better. But I do want you to know that let's say kiwi has vitamin C, but it also has many other things in the kiwi that help you utilize the vitamin C. But then there's other things in the kiwi that block as much utilization as you think you're getting. So it's this, well, do I get as much as I think I'm getting? Cause I can't test it. And then if you eat a lot of kiwi, well, then you get a lot of sugar. You see where I'm going with this? 
they've done studies where they take things like zinc and they get the zinc from oysters, for example, and then they'll they test for how much zinc is in the blood and it's really high. But then they'll give somebody, I think it's spinach, and then they test them again and they only absorb like 10% of what they did without the spinach. Wait a minute, what? Why would the spinach block the absorption of vitamin C or excuse me, of zinc? Well, that would be because there's anti-nutrients in there that block absorptions of things like minerals. And in this case, zinc, same thing can happen with your vitamins. All right. I think I've killed that one enough to move on. So here we have, it's a, for those of you listening audio, it's just a comparison between Louis Pasteur and Antoine Beauchamp. Louis Pasteur is on the left. Anton Beauchamp is on the right. If you don't know, Pasteur is the quote, father of germ theory, which he's not, but let's just say he is because most people believe that. And then Beauchamp is one of the fathers of the terrain theory. What's the difference? Well, Pasteur believed the germs cause everything. And then Beauchamp and his camp believe that it's just terrain, very similar to the compost pile you might have in your backyard. So if you read the screen here, I think it's very interesting that Louis Pasteur said, the microbe is nothing. The terrain is everything. Those were his last words. So everybody who believes in germ theory don't know that before Pasteur died, he said, nope, <laughs> I was wrong. Guess what you don't make money from? That would be the terrain theory. You can sell all kinds of drugs. You can make drugs. You can put people into fear. If you make them believe that there are things out there that are going to get you. You can't see them. They're so small. They're going to get you. You're always in fear that you can't touch another person. Well, I've went over those things before. I just think it's interesting. And in the germ theory, they want to give you drugs and vaccines and things like that. And in the terrain theory, we want to make your water clean. We want to make your body clean. We're trying to help your body fix itself because we believe that your body will fix itself. Now, before we move on, Eric, what does this have to do with vitamin C? Well, this is the perspective I want to give you. Maybe vitamin C does not stimulate the immune system. What do you mean? Well, if the terrain theory is true and there are no germs, then do you have an immune system? I would say that you have a terrain system. And in that terrain, you need to help the terrain clean itself up. This is why in the terrain theory, there's no such thing as an immune system. There's just bacteria and yeast and molds that actually your body allows to use these to clean up poisons and dead and dying tissue and so forth. Talked about that many times. I'm going to say vitamin C is there to help you clean up the waste products that bacteria and molds and yeast create. Think of it like that. Vitamin C in and of itself doesn't do anything. It's just a quote chemical or molecule if you want to believe such a thing. But what could it do? Well, it couldn't impart charge because everything is electrical, literally everything. And all physicists will tell you. Everything has a charge. So it's the charge that does something. And if that charge that vitamin C has, that's specific to vitamin C because it everything does have a specific frequency. That frequency, I believe, binds to and helps your body detox the waste products of said bacteria, yeast, and molds. If you do any research on vitamin C, you're going to see all about how it detoxifies the body. Tons of studies done on this. 
we'll get into a little bit of it. So if vitamin C is helping your body rid the waste, it looks like you're getting better from being, quote, sick. You see where I'm going with this? I like this concept a lot because vitamin C, we think, is this super fantastic immune boosting vitamin when really it's just another uh, broom or mop or sponge just helps the body get rid of waste materials. And you have lots and lots of waste materials. And when you are cleansing, like spring and fall, when the weather changes and these kind of things, or you get a lot of poisons and your body says, well, I can't take this anymore. I got to clean itself out, clean myself out. What does it do? These, and I'm going to get into them, these yeast, mold, and bacteria will eat up these toxins and they have to, you know, defecate and urinate. And when they do that, well, you're not going to feel so good. And that creates things like histamines and pH differences and all kinds of stuff that makes you feel ill. So vitamin C comes along and helps you detoxify. Okay, I think I killed that one again. I know it's a long explanation, but the whole point of this episode is I don't think we're looking at vitamin C correctly. We're using germ theory and applying vitamin C to it when really vitamin C should be applied to the terrain theory. It's just another way to clean yourself out of the waste materials. And yes, it works. All right. And to back up my point, I do have two episodes talking about all these kinds of things. If you're interested, episode 66, no such thing. It's all lies. And I do cover, if you see here, I know it's small writing for those looking at it, but uh, I talk about all these kinds of things with germs and vaccines and viruses and stuff like that. Also did Episode 73 about the Jedi midichlorians, known as somatids, and that's pleomorphism, which leads me to this graphic that I've shown you many times. This is how a somatid, which is an entity that lives in you, and it's everywhere, I mean almost everywhere on the planet, they never die and they're totally immortal. You have these in you. And your body allows these somatids to turn into whatever form they need to, to clean up waste material in your body. So their first form they can turn into is a type of bacteria specific to that poison or decaying tissue or situation. Then it can turn into a yeast and then it can turn into a mold. All three of those clean you up. That is known as the terrain theory. I'm going to read this for everybody uh, so they can grasp what I'm trying to say. This is really, this is really cool stuff here. They're comparing microzymas to dark energy, but in reality, this is just a really good explanation of these things. Microzyma are never formed or born and never decay or die. And by the way, this is from uh, a journal, an international journal of physics, etc. They only associate and disassociate, coordinate and decoordinate, come together and pull asunder. They are immortal as far as we know. That was said by Sun Oyoid. Did I say that right? Quote, enlightenment leads to benightedness, science entails knee science, attributed to Philippe Bordeaux. If I were asked to describe, define microzyma, which is cellular dust, I would say, A, they are living things that do not fit into any category other living things are divided into. B, they never exceed 500 nanometer in size. They are never destroyed or created. D, they associate and disassociate, coordinate and uncoordinate. E, they produce chemicals via reactions they carry out. F, they are found in all living things and even in non-living things. By the same reasoning, anything 
with all or certain of the above characteristics could predate the microzymas. If not, according to the microzymian theory of origin, which is also known as cellular dust hypothesis, such a thing, living or non-living, would have to have been created by the microzyma at some point in time. Meaning, it started as microzyma and ends there. You know, they find that when they take mummies from Egypt and other places, real mummies now, if you take some of the dust or the material that mummy is and put it in water and add some sugar, it grows this incredible array of yeast, mold, and bacteria. Hmm. So essentially, those microzyma somatids came to life in the water and sugar. They never died because you can't kill them. They're immortal, like they just said. And then when they're done doing their job, they go right back into their original somatid form. Fascinating, isn't that? Think about that. And they're in you, and they make you up. They're your Jedi midichlorians. Anyway. So the vitamin C that you get from your food is how you can help cleanse your body of the toxins, the um, waste product that the somatids, yeast, mold, and bacteria have created. When that concentration gets high, you need to get that out. And one of the ways you can get that out is with vitamin C. This is why vitamin C helps you feel better. You're cleaning out the waste product. Get rid of the waste, of course you're going to feel better. This is why vitamin C is important. And if you're going to buy vitamin C, I know it sounds weird. Eric, I'll just eat citrus. Well, yeah, you can. But then you're going to eat a lot of citrus. And you're going to eat a lot of sugar. This is the best vitamin C that you can get. Now, any of the liposomal vitamin Cs, that means it is a vitamin C structure that is now coated. Liposomal is a fat. So they coat something with a fat. Really super small, highly absorbable the max absorption you can get. This is almost 90% absorption. This is Dr. Cowan's liposomal vitamin C. Sourced properly, created properly, and the highest vitamin C utilization that you can get. Essentially, you'd be eating a tremendous amount of food to get the same thing you can get in just one pump of this stuff. It's also bottled a certain way to protect it. This stuff is incredible. Anyway, if you want to purchase vitamin C and you need power when you need it, this is a great way to go. Probably the best way you can go. See, other liposomals are okay, but they're sourced from bad vitamin C. Chinese, uh, low quality, uh, low standards. Even the sunflower oil can be low quality. This is all top, top notch. And by the way, for those of you looking at this and saying, that's a 250 milliliter bottle for 120 bucks. Yeah, but that's four months worth <laughs> if you take it every day. So that's $30 a bottle. How many of you spend $30 on one thing that you utilize for an entire month? Oh, you know what I'm talking about. A lot of different things. Do you want to know how you stop the utilization of vitamin C in your body? That would be by more carbs and sugar. Eric, you constantly talk about this. Well, I do because sugar and then carbohydrates when they turn into sugar are poisons in the body. You can handle small amounts. That's fine. But when you get up higher, the sugar content is poisonous to the body. I told you before, you get sick from trauma, poisoning, and malnutrition. Sugar and carbohydrates create two of those. They poison you and they cause malnutrition because they lower how you utilize everything else from your food. But you say, I was told that I should eat all these things. They're healthy and I should use all this to get all these vitamins and antioxidants and things like this. Okay. I hear you. Let me read you from eScholarship.org, and this is a scientific paper. As detailed 
let me really quickly just say, vitamin C is similar to insulin. So when you have sugar go up, insulin goes up, you stop absorbing vitamin C, which could mean you also destabilize vitamin C. Just saying. All right, let's read this. Metabolism of vitamin C, including absorption and its uptake by several cell types, is inhibited by increasing glucose concentration. Western type diets resulting in carbohydrate overconsumption and high blood level of glucose may inhibit utilization of vitamin C also when taken as a supplement. Current dietary guidelines instead of animal sources concentrate on plant sources of vitamin C, thereby also increasing carbohydrate load and intake of polyphenols, which both inhibit vitamin C utilization. Eric, what did you just say? You're telling me that vitamin C is inhibited when I eat a standard diet. Oh, like the current dietary guidelines it just said. Dietary guidelines, which is nothing but sugar. Go back to my episode talking about the food pyramid. But I was also told that polyphenols are great for you from plants and, and fruit and stuff. Well, not according to this science journal. <laughs> they just said it's not good. Polyphenols are a... So if you don't know, polyphenols are an anti-nutrient in plants. And they block things, just like it said. Okay, I'm getting off my soapbox. By contrast, studies of contemporary hunter-gatherer societies, as well as documentations of the Arctic people from the 18th to 19th century indicate no signs of scurvy despite subsisting on diets predominated by animal foods of animal origin and using no vitamin supplements. So they ate nothing but animal sources, no grains, no fruit, no vegetables, and yet they had no scurvy. Huh, isn't that interesting? It gets better. Our own clinical experience with the paleolithic uh, ketogenic diet also shows improving health parameters and long-term sustainability of meat-fat-based diet in the presence of vitamin C supplementation. <laughs> it may be anticipated that supplementing vitamin C while on a Western-type diet may not reproduce the biochemical and physiological complexity of the evolutionarily evolutionary adapted way to utilize vitamin C. Meaning, yes, you eat a Western type diet, not good. You interrupt the whole thing. Uh, even though the amount of dietary vitamin C consumed on an animal meat-based, meat-fat-based diet may be lower as compared to dietary intake from some fruits and vegetables, the former may ensure a higher bioavailability of vitamin C. Oh, <laughs> this is where I always want to say things like, I told you so. We believe that the loss of vitamin C synthesis was not deleterious in the ancestral environment humans are evolutionary adapted to. Rather, a mismatch between our current diet and ancestral physiology may explain why deficient levels of vitamin C are associated with disease. Instead of supplementing vitamin C, changing our nutrition as a whole and adopting a meat-fat-based diet, even if it may sound a radical solution, may be a better choice to support vitamin C, say it together, homeostasis. Okay, that's usually a mic drop moment right there. What they're trying to tell you is vitamin C you get from animal sources is just as good as anything else you get and actually could be better because you have an absence of carbs and sugar. That was just awesome. I don't know what else to tell you. So this is also from... Um, a study done at uh, uh, NIH here. 
quickly just to bring this point home. Vitamin C is structurally similar to glucose and can replace it in many chemical reactions and thus is effective for prevention of non-enzymatic glycosylation of protein. In other words, vitamin C is structurally similar to glucose and inhibits how you utilize protein, like collagen. Hmm. Vitamin C in meat, approximately uh, grass-fed beef, 2.2 pounds, gets you 2.56 milligrams. Oh, that's such a small amount, Eric. It's in perfect vitamin C form with meat and fat that you just heard about. And then grain-fed beef, 1.6 milligrams. So yes, grass-fed has a higher content. And if you get into organs and seafood, you can get even more. Point is, the vitamin C from an animal source, like cows, is a better and more powerful vitamin C than you're going to get from kiwi or citrus or any of those other things. You need less of it. And I just read to you, it's more powerful. Okay. This is why they had scurvy. What well, you don't hear about whenever you hear about this thing with well, vitamin C is, uh, is the cure for scurvy. Well, it is. And it's funny how they, ju I just read to you, they don't have scurvy when you're on a meat fat based diet. Where are you going to get a meat fat based diet? That would be carnivore. What were they eating on these ships that caused them to not have enough vitamin C? Um, nothing. They were eating foods that had vitamin C. The problem was they were eating foods that also had a lot of carbohydrates. Matter of fact, that's all they had. Oatmeal and grains. That's all that would last on the ship. Fruits and vegetables died quick. Meat went bad fast. They didn't have refrigeration and ice to hold that stuff. All they had was carbs. You know, bread and grains and gruel and oatmeal and all that stuff. They probably ran out of sugar to make it taste good, but even if you put sugar in there, you'd get scurvy faster. You see the problem? Once they got limes, hence the limey's idea, they got enough vitamin C to start turning that corner, which would make them live long enough in order for them to get some meat and some other foods. So what is scurvy? not going to get deep into the weeds of scurvy, but essentially it's just a breakdown of collagen. So they lost their teeth and they had issues with bone and everything else that has connective tissue. So here you see connective tissue. This is obviously muscle. See that sheet right there? That is fascia and fascia is connective tissue and holds you together and keeps you strong and healthy. See this area down here? this connective tissue that's in parallel arrangement. See how that is designed that way. Isn't that awesome? Well, that happens when you have proper amounts of vitamin C. In order to create collagen in the body, you need vitamin C. So not only does it pull waste, but it also has the energetic quality to stimulate your body to create collagen in the right form. Pretty cool stuff. But that's right there why scurvy was a problem. And by the way, for people who don't, well, I should say for people who consume a lot of sugar and carbohydrates, why it kills you over time is it breaks down collagen because you can't make it anymore. You're too busy using vitamin C to clean up waste because you're ill in, in you are in ill health and because of the high carbohydrate content, you can't absorb the vitamin C because the insulin is too high. You can see it's this spiral you get into. And, and I'm not telling you, you have to be a carnivore. What I'm just simply stating is the more the meat foods, you know, animal foods you can consume, you don't end up with such high insulin levels and then you feel better and you get better. We need to move on. I'm just getting long. You know what the best source of vitamin C is? 
that would be grass and grass like um, wheatgrass and barley, especially and prairie lands like this. And so we raise cattle to eat the grass because that's what they do. And then they make the best vitamin C. Now, I want you to see this. This is the perspective that you got to see. All that grass, they feed on that. They then ferment that in their body, which is a long process. So high vitamin C content in the grass and per 2.2 pounds of grass-fed beef, you get 2.56 milligrams. You'd think that it would be really high. Well, they can make the amount that they make because of the way their digestive system is. But if we eat the grass, that's not what we make. We do not absorb all that vitamin C. We don't create it the same way they do. That has to be fermented. So now what you, in their body. So now what you have is a very concentrated, very powerful two and a half milligram amount of vitamin C. And because your insulin's low, it's extremely powerful. Best source. Guess what else also eats grass? No way, Eric. Pigs don't eat grass. Yeah, they do. They forage on everything. They literally eat almost everything. And if you leave them out, don't give them food. They find all the food they need. Mushrooms and nuts and tubers and grasses and vegetables and all kinds of things. You don't need to feed them anything. These are pasture-raised pigs. Their quality of meat is as high as beef. Some cases, certain nutrient profiles, they're better. So pastured pork, nothing wrong with that. And guess what? Vitamin C content, high, just like the grass feeders. Thought this might be interesting to show you. We kind of talked about this several episodes ago about how people were getting sick. Remember, trauma, poisoning, and malnutrition. Back in the day, this is a very old photo. I'm going to say this is probably late 1800s. All the waste was everywhere. And you got sick from poisoning, from all the waste. Well, if you remember that episode, I talked about how pigs were everywhere. Well, they actually captured a photo here of the pig eating what? What do you think that is? Right there. I'm willing to say that's probably some animal's feces, like a horse or something else. So there were so many hogs eating up all this, what we consider waste, to help clean up everything. And no one shooed them away. They just let them do it because they cleaned it all up. Yeah, they did poop themselves too, but you know. So my point is, is that that's pretty neat to see. Yes, Animals like scavengers like that will clean up a mess. And on Earth, yeah, that's one of the systems of cleaning up a mess. So when you're sick and you feel terrible, you need to think about it like this. Why am I going to take vitamin C to feel better? To stimulate my immune system? No. You are cleaning out waste material, helping the body clean out poisons. Therefore, you're going to start feeling better, which is why when you take vitamin C, you're not instantly feeling better, right? It takes a little bit because it there's a lot of waste material there. So when you have what is called an infection, which doesn't exist, but anyway, all that waste material that the bacteria, yeast, or molds are consuming, sorry, the well, it's also waste, your own waste, but let's say you got a poison um, or your body's like, all right, I just have too much poison going on. I need to clean this up. So somatids kick in, cleans up all the nonsense that's been there for six months. And then boom, it's November and you get sick. That sick is the waste that they're trying to clean up. So yes, you're, you're, you're essentially cleaning up a really bad waste and creating one that it's not going to feel good for a few days to a week. That's a big payoff because the massive, very powerful waste materials cause things like cancer and other things. So I'd rather deal with 
being uncomfortable for two, three, four, five, six, eight days than to have a really major situation like cancer, which is just poisoning. The other thing that kicks you into that is malnutrition. So if you don't have a good diet, then your body is going to die. And as it's falling apart, those somatids have to kick in to clean it up. That terrain has to do what it's supposed to do. When it does that, again, it defecates. It creates waste products and you're going to feel it. So think about it like that. It's a different way to think that there's no germ that's making you feel that way. It's your own body cleaning up the mess that you're feeling. And vitamin C is one of the ways that your body uses to pull that waste material out, make you feel better. That's what you want. And then it doesn't come back. I want to quickly go through when you don't get enough vitamin C, what happens? So I just said trauma, poisoning, and malnutrition are generally the three causes for ill health. And these that I'm going to list off really quick are either poisoning or malnutrition. Endothelial dysfunction. And by the way, these are all associated with vitamin C intake. All right. And this is from Oregon State uh, University. This is all proven. These are clinical studies. These are, uh, this is just a whole bunch of vitamin C information brought together for, it's just condensed. It's really, really awesome read. Hypertension, cardiovascular disease, stroke, cancer like breast cancer, stomach cancer, colon cancer, Nod Hodgkin's lymphoma, other site-specific cancer types, type 2 diabetes, there's your insulin situation, adverse pregnancy outcomes, Alzheimer's, cataracts, gout, mortality, cardiovascular disease, cerebral ischemia, reperfusion injury, vascular complications of diabetes, sepsis, that is poisoning. <laughs> right. Oh, I just want to talk about that one so much. And then you get into where the food sources are. But all of those I just listed off, when you read these, these are all things that are either malnutrition, so you don't have enough vitamin C from too many carbs and sugar, therefore you die slowly and you have all these complications, or you have poisons and then your somatids kick in and the, they clean up the mess and then their waste product makes you feel crappy and you got to clean that up. So it, you can see... Um, the whole point of this episode I'm trying to bring across, I know I've said this a few times, vitamin C is, it's, it's essential. You need it, but I want you to see it differently. It's more about a cleanser than it is about a stimulator. It's there to help pull the, the waste material out, not stimulate white blood cells. White blood cells are just part of your terrain. They're just there to clean up mess. They don't kill anything. Killing stuff is the germ theory, which has never, ever been tr proven to be true. Not once ever. And you heard it right from the horse's mouth. Louis Pasteur said, the microbe is nothing. The terrain is everything. Why do we keep believing in germs when the guy who supposedly proved it, which he didn't, just said it's about the terrain? He was wrong. And yet our whole model is based on him. We all know why. It's money. You can't make money if you can heal yourself. Other people want to make money off of dead and dying people. And that's the, that's just the way it is. Sorry to end it on a somber note, but maybe it helps you see things a little differently with vitamin C. I appreciate you listening as usual. If you have any ideas or things you want me to talk about, just send them my way. And it doesn't matter what it is. We can talk about whatever you want. Anything to do with health. Thank you for listening as usual. And I'll see you next time. Take care of yourselves. <laughs>